Let's all meet on our mat. Coming to a seated position, let's begin with that seated meditation like we love, helping us ground and center. Whatever seat is comfortable for you is comfortable for me. So just find your seat, close your eyes, start to enter your body, enter your practice. Just connecting to your breath, to your posture, making sure you're sitting tall, that you're also comfortable, which is very important in yoga. If you ever feel any pain, see if there's something you can do to adjust your posture so that you don't feel it anymore. In the seated, seated meditation, you can place a pillow under your hips so that your hips are higher than your knees. Or you can try other seated poses um, to see what works for you where you don't feel pain and you can sit in silence and stillness just for a couple of moments comfortably. Hmm. Conducting a little body scan for yourself. Seeing how your body feels today. Seeing if there's any differences on the sides of your body, right and left, front and back. If you're leaning more towards one side, one side feels stronger. Just these little notes that you're making about your body in your seated pose. Without any judgment, just observation. deep breaths before we open our eyes. And slowly open them again. Seeing if you feel any difference in your body just from a couple moments of sitting and connecting to your breath and your posture. Inhale the hands up. And let's stretch our shoulders for a minute, grabbing one elbow, opening that side for you. It doesn't matter which side you choose. Taking three deep breaths here. Inhale the hands up. Long spine, feel space between every vertebrae. Exhale, switch sides. Grabbing the opposite elbow, just leaning completely. You should feel a nice deep stretch on your outer shoulder, just on the outside rim of your armpit region. Inhale, the hands come up. Exhale back to your legs. Let's add some head circles here. Still connecting to your breath, releasing any tension or blockages from the neck region, the throat region. Change direction. Bring your right hand up and place it right behind your ear on the bottom left side of your skull. And start to tilt your head in the direction of your arm, kind of curling into that arm here, holding forward chest to chin connection. Going deep into this backside portion of the neck usually stiffens up, especially if you sleep in weird positions on your neck. 
probably get tight in these regions. Inhale, come up. Release the hand, exhale, switch sides. Bringing that other hand behind your ear on the other side. Slowly melting down, looking towards your thigh. Curling into your arm, maybe chest to chin connection. A couple deep breaths here. Slowly release. Let's come up to our knees, coming to our trusty toe stretch, which I love so much. <sighs> Can't get enough. We're sitting out with our knees together, heels together, or ankles together. The feet are straight, make sure they're not tilting in any direction. We're just sitting here, bringing all of our weight onto our heels, going deep into the soles of our feet, into our ankles, strengthening our ankles, as well as our knees. Take five deep breaths here. Close your eyes, really connect to this deep stretch. See if you can quiet the inner voice that's probably screaming a little bit. <laughs> Just to find the stillness, being aware of the difference between a really deep stretch and actual pain. Super important, especially in this nice deep stretch class. The use of your breath, it's really easy to tell the difference between pain and a deep stretch because usually if you take a couple deep breaths in a posture that might feel uncomfortable or painful, with those deep breaths it will usually release a little bit and start to feel more comfortable. If it actually is pain then it probably won't and then you can find variations to your posture, for example, coming forward and moving the weight on your feet or maybe just inching up a bit using those thigh muscles if you want to activate them more it's up to you but just know that there's always variations you never have to give up completely on a posture find the one that suits you best from here we'll do the reverse tapping the feet for a moment increasing the circulation and flow in our feet and our toes and we'll do the reverse, still knees together, heels together. Again, you can stay here if you already feel a deep stretch in the front of your ankle, or you can come back onto your fingertips and start to lift the knees, feeling this deep stretch in the ankle region. If you feel anything in your knees, then release a little bit, because you shouldn't feel it in your knees. It should be focused here in the ankle region. Five deep breaths. And we'll slowly come forward and meet in a tabletop. Hands beneath the shoulders, knees beneath the hips. And make sure you really check that because sometimes it might feel like they're under your shoulders or under your hips, but really they'll be much closer and then you'll be in this kind of narrow angle. If you're further out, that's okay. If you have any wrist problems, I would suggest bringing your hands a bit further out so you're less um, at a 90, you're not at a 90 degree angle with your hand beneath your shoulder, but you have a bigger angle here, which will put less pressure on your wrist. So it's up to you also finding your variation here. And let's enter cat-cow together. Inhale, look up, drop the belly. Exhale, push off the ground, round the spine up and lift towards your belly button. Inhale, exhale, just warming up the spine here. Keep going with your deep breaths. Feel free to move at a slower or a more fast pace, depending on how you're feeling today. Still connecting every movement with your breath, inhaling as you look up and exhaling as you look down. Wow. 
One more. Even when we got a neutral spine, let's just start to wiggle the spine out. The hands and legs will stay straight and locked in their position. And just the spine, isolating this nice spine and hip movement together. Really release any tension or blockages in the back region, allowing circulation to flow, movement of the muscles, contraction, and release of all the muscles in the abdominal region and in the back region, shoulders and hips. Really great overall stretch. And let's change direction if you haven't done so already. some circles on the wrist just for some extra love to those wrist joints. Just circling on the wrist, moving the weight of your body over your wrists. Now we want to try to make this circle really big to really strengthen the wrist properly, but you can do smaller circles as well if that feels more right for you today. Breathing deeply as you circle. Change direction. Make sure you're really pressing into those fingertips as well. You don't want to just bring all the weight into your wrist. You also want to strengthen the whole hand. The tops of your fingers should be white from pressing on them and really activating them. Coming back to your tabletop, let's flip the hands over. If this is too much for your wrist, you can come closer to your knees and just play with the weight here, bringing it onto your wrist. You can even just stay here with the less weight on them. Or you can come into this tabletop intensely intensified variation. Make sure your fingers are still pressing into the ground and not curling up into little fists. And also make sure that you're not collapsing into this posture. You still want nice, long, straight arms, a neutral spine, active body here. More deep breath in this pose. And slowly release from your hands, coming into a seat, I'm just wiggling out the hands now in an eight angle flow. Just to release any of that tension from that wrist stretch since it was a really deep one. I just want to release it out a bit before we continue. Switch your finger hold to what's more uncomfortable for you. For me, it's my right thumb on front. I do whatever it is for you. And then switch the direction of your eight angles. So if you started on the left, let's start on the right. Or the opposite. And let's come back to our tabletop. Come onto our toes and lift our hips up, coming into our first downward dog of the day. Just finding your specific downward dog today, maybe walking out the legs, walking out the knees, shaking the hips, moving the shoulders, whatever feels good for you right now in your down dog. You can even bend the knees. If you don't want to go too deep in the hamstrings right now and just want to work on that nice long spine. Walk the feet forward, coming to the top of your mat. Inhale, come all the way up. Hands together. Exhale, hands to heart center. Rest in Samastiti. Hmm. 
Let's do one round of half the salutations together on each leg, just to warm up the body a bit before we go into some deep stretches. Not too many rounds. Inhale, the hands come up. Look towards your fingers, long spine here, and you should feel this extension from your feet to your fingertips. Exhale, come down towards the ground, forward fold. You can always bend your knees here in any folding position when you want to focus more on the straight spine. Head to knees. You're going to bring the left leg all the way back, coming into a nice deep low lunge. Drop the knee. Inhale, look up, stretch that neck and that throat, activating your hormones and glands there. Come back to plank, hold your breath. And let's exhale together, dropping the knees and dropping the chin to the floor, coming in to eight limb pose. Should look like this if you're not familiar with it. Your hips stay high. And you're just connected here with your chin, hands, knees, chest, and toes. Exhale here. Inhale, push through into cobra, shoulders away from the ears. Look up if you have any compression in the lower back, or too much compression, I should say. And you can come to a half cobra. Tuck the toes, exhale, downward dog. Adjusting as needed with the feet and hands. Look forward, bringing the left leg all the way in between your hands. If you need help, you can help the leg come forward in between your hands. And then drop the hips again. Inhale, look up. Big toe to big toe. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise. Upward hand posture. Exhale. Rest. One more on the other side. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, forward fold. Right leg back, all the way. Drop the hips, inhale, look up. Hold your breath to plank. Exhale, drop down to eight limb pose, dropping the knees and slowly bringing the chin to the ground. Inhale, come through the hands, cobra. Exhale, downward dog. Look forward, hold your breath as you bring your right leg all the way in between your hands. Inhale as you look up. Big toe to big toe, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, come up, palms touch. Exhale, I'm steep if you rest. Coming to the middle of our mat, we'll bring the feet together, maybe five centimeters apart, having this nice inner hips distance here to feel nice and stable. Inhale, the hands come up. Exhale, drop down to a forward fold, hands to the ground. If you need extra props here, because you're not at the ground yet, you can use a chair or a block or a book, anything to support you halfway. Exhale, take a deep breath here in your forward fold. Inhale, bring the right hand up and look towards your right hand. You can bend in the left knee a bit to help you go deeper into that forward fold twist. Exhale, come back down, straighten the legs. Inhale, left hand up, maybe bending in the right knee, going deeper into this twist. Exhale, down. Inhale, right. Exhale, down. Inhale, left. Exhale, down. One more on each side. Inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale. We're gonna connect the hands behind our back and come into this nice deep shoulder stretch here in our forward fold. You can choose to bend your knees here and rest your chest on your thighs if you wanna focus more on the shoulders. Or you can do this with straight legs 
and work on those hamstrings as well. Let's take five deep breaths here. Every exhale, you find yourself releasing just a little bit more into the pose. Drop the hands to the ground slowly in your normal forward fold. And let's widen up our stance to a wide angle that's comfortable for you. Toes will be pointing out for this moment. As we inhale up into our goddess pose, the knees are still bent. Goddess pose is like this. Make sure your lower back is protected, tilting the pelvis forward a bit. <sighs> Take a deep breath here. Inhale the hands up. Exhale, hands come to your knees, and let's go in some deep stretches here. You don't need to activate the thighs too much. You can really sit into this pose using this contra pressure on your hands, on your knees, to just kind of release into your goddess pose. Inhale, lengthen in the spine. Exhale, let's twist all the way to the right side, bringing our left shoulder down in the direction down. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, switch sides, look toward the left, enter this nice deep goddess twist, stretching the whole right side of the body, really. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, switch. Inhale up. Exhale, left. Inhale, center. Let's do one more on each side. Exhale. Inhale, center. Exhale, down and looking towards the left. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, drop your hands back down to the ground and twist your toes towards the center now, working on our forward fold in this wide angle. Let's take a moment to wiggle out the spine in this wide fold. You have all this space here to rock forward by your legs. Still breathing deeply. Inhale, look forward, straight spine. Let's add some twists here as well, dropping the left hand flat on the ground. Inhale, right hand comes up. Exhale down. Inhale, left hand. Exhale down. Keep going. Doing two more on each side. Slowly, we're gonna move our weight towards the right leg and bend in that right leg, coming into this side lunge. Skandasana, we're flexing in the left foot, and kind of just sitting on our right bent leg here, almost like half a yogi squat. If this is too much, you can come onto your hands and be on the top of your toes and your uh, right foot. Or if it's okay, you'll place your whole right foot on the ground and really come into this deep left inner thigh stretch. You can place your hands in heart center. Let's take five deep breaths here. We keep our hands in heart center to really open up the heart forward and still work on our posture, shoulders, back, long spine, even when we're not focusing on that. When we bring our hands to heart center, it helps us find this posture. Placing the hands back down towards the ground. Inhale to your wide angle fold. Exhale, walk the hands to the left leg. And start to squat down, flexing in the right leg. Toes are up. 
And coming to our half yogi squat leg on the left leg. Again, bringing hands to heart center if that's comfortable or in front of you and, and leaning a bit forward to release um, the weight on your right inner thigh. Or placing the whole left foot on the ground, deepening the stretch here. Five deep breaths. Inhale. Slowly walking the hands back to center, coming to your wide fold. Exhale, release down, melting forward, as if you want your head to touch the ground. Inhale, rise all the way up with your hands, look towards your fingertips. Exhale, turn the whole body toward the left, moving all the toes and feet in the direction of the left as well. Exhale, lift the hands up, uh, inhale. Exhale, bring the hands all the way down by your feet. Again, if you need any help with props here, you can have two books, two blocks, chair in front of you, or you can just kind of bend your knee and, and bring your hands onto your thigh, but only with a bent knee, not with a straight knee. If you're with me, we're with two straight legs in this variation of pyramid pose, where our hands are on the ground and we're coming into this deep back of the left thigh stretch. Hamstrings as well. <sighs> Three deep breaths here. Won't be here for too long. Inhale, come up. Swinging the hands up, coming back to your wide angle stance, feet facing forward. Exhale, turn towards the right. All the feet now are in the direction of the right side. Straight forward. Inhale, hands come up. Maybe a slight back bend here, really opening up the body. Exhale, hands come to the ground or to your props. Legs are straight as possible. You don't have to be on your hands. You can also be on your fingertips to really strengthen the fingertips as well. Three deep breaths. Slowly lean forward, inhale, wide angle, exhale, inch the feet together, and rest. Coming to the tops of our mats, inhale the hands up, exhale, forward fold, let's just walk back to a downward dog. Going to do some fun deep stretches here, so get ready mentally. <laughs> We're going to inhale, the left leg comes up, one legged dog. Bend that left leg so you get a nice quad stretch on the front of your thigh and start to look under your left armpit. Coming into this deep twist here, stretching the front side of your left thigh. Just gonna take three deep breaths here. Inhale, the leg comes back up. Exhale, bring the leg halfway in between your hands and your legs and place the foot down. It will look something like this. Slowly, we're gonna move the weight to our right hand and come into a variation of side plank with this stable left leg helping us feel more balanced here. We're gonna bring that left hand up towards the sky and get a nice deep stretch here in the outer hip, in the hamstring in the right leg, 
and shoulder and wrist in the right hand. So really nice deep stretch. <sighs> Just take one deep breath here. I know it's a pretty intense posture, but I believe in you. Bringing the left hand back down. Inhale the left leg back up into your one-legged dog. Exhale, bring the left leg forward on the outside of your left leg and come bring the right knee down to lizard pose. In the lizard pose, both of our hands are on the inside of our front leg. And you can choose to have this active leg in the back, active foot, or release the foot down if you want to go a little bit deeper. You can also stay on the hands here or move down to the elbows. Also going deeper in your posture, also releasing um, weight from the wrists. Take five deep breaths here in your lizard variation. And slowly walk the hands back up. We're gonna bend the right leg now, bend the right knee. You can stay here, or you can slowly start to reach your left hand back towards your leg and really intensify that quad stretch in the right leg on the front of the thigh. Three deep breaths here, either holding the foot or not, it's up to you. Slowly release the leg back down. Let's walk the hands back to our right leg and start to straighten that left leg, coming into half splits. On our fingertips here, inhale, look forward, straight spine. Exhale, sink forward, head to leg in your half splits, flexing in the left foot. From here, we'll slowly start to sit down in from our half splits, bringing our hips to the ground. Our right leg should be on the outside of our right thigh. I can show you forward. Like this. And the left leg will be straight. Coming into our trianga. Ekapada Muteka Pachimottanasana. <laughs> really long name in Sanskrit. I think it's the longest name of all the poses. <laughs> Inhale the hands up. Exhale, let's come down to a forward fold here. If this is too deep in your knee, you can sit on a prop to raise your hips up higher and release um, some of the weight on your knee. Or you can just bend the knee up forward if it's too, too much. If you're okay, we're taking a couple deep breaths here in our posture. <sighs> Inhale, walk the hands back up. Exhale, let's bend that left leg. Coming back to a child pose for a moment. Legs are together, head to the ground. Hands can be forward or by the feet holding the heels. Whatever's more comfortable for you right now. Let's take 10 deep breaths here just to really release into our child pose. Release all the tension from the back. Spread out in all the regions, all the sides. Slowly come out of your child's pose and let's begin the other side. So we meet in our from tabletop, we'll come to downward dog. Meeting in downward dog here. 
and begin the other side. We're gonna lift the right leg now. One-legged dog, bend the knee, and twist, turning under your right armpit, looking beyond your right armpit region. You should feel this nice, juicy, deep stretch on the top of your right thigh. So we're really letting gravity take that foot as far back as possible to go deeper into this pose. Inhale, come back to one-legged dog. Exhale, bring the right leg halfway in between your hands and your legs and place the foot on the ground. Leaning the weight towards your left hand, coming into this side plank with extra support from our right leg. Stretching out our outer right hip now. Look up towards your right hand. Just take one deep breath here. <sighs> Maybe another one, just because it feels really nice. <laughs> Drop the head down towards the ground. Inhale, right leg back up towards the sky, one-legged dog. Exhale, bring the leg to the outside of your right hand. Drop the left knee. Maybe dropping the foot to the top of the foot. If it's okay to go deep for you. Or you could stay on the top of your toes. Again, you can stay on your hands here on a prop if you need, or coming down to your forearms, deep lizard pose, five deep breaths, in whatever variation you chose. stretch a bit, pulling the foot a little bit closer to the body. Breathe deeply into this deep quad stretch. And slowly release the leg. Walk the hands back towards your left leg and straighten the right leg, coming into your half splits. Inhale, look forward, straight spine. Exhale, slowly lower down, head to leg. <sighs> Breathing deeply in your posture. And slowly start to move your weight back to your seat, bringing your hips towards the ground. Coming into Trianga Mukha Eka Pada Muchas Pachimottanasana. I just love saying it, I can't help it. This time the left leg is bent, foot on the outside of the leg, you're not sitting on the foot. Right leg is straight and flexed. Again, if you have any tension in the knee, you can sit on something, bring a prop to sit on to release the weight on your knee. Inhale, the hands up. Exhale, come forward, head to leg. Five deep breaths here. Slowly walk the hands up, inhale. Exhale, bring that right leg, bending it, leaning forward, coming into your seat. Exhale into child pose, just for a moment to rest after those intense hip postures. Mm. 
Look forward, inhale, come into your tabletop. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, left leg up. Exhale, bring that left knee as close as possible to your left hand and drop the leg, coming into pigeon pose. In the pigeon pose, you can keep the leg as close as possible to your body for less intensification or bringing the leg more out forward, finding this kind of seven with your legs, the number seven. But Whatever is comfortable for you. You don't have to intensify. Pigeon pose is intense enough. <laughs> We're gonna inhale on the fingertips, open the heart, release the head back. Exhale, slowly walk the hands down. But before we come to a resting pigeon, we're gonna open the arms out to our shoulder height and stay on our fingertips. And twist looking towards our left shoulder the same shoulder as the bent knee. So if you're doing an opposite side of me, make sure you're twisting towards the bent knee. The hands are active here. Just twist for a moment. And slowly release. You can bring the hands back to center and rest the head on your arms. Taking 10 deep breaths here in your pigeon pose. You can add movement here. If the static pose is too much for you, you can rock the hips side to side. Or stay in the static pose. Either way, you want to make sure that you're still tilting a lot of the weight towards your right leg. Going deep into that thigh region, into the hip flexors. Slowly walk the hands back up. Inhale, exhale. Coming back to your one-legged dog. And dropping the leg. Let's switch sides. Inhale, right leg up. Exhale, right knee to right arm. And drop the leg. Coming into our pigeon on the other side. Again, you can choose for more intensity or less intensity with your legs by keeping the foot closer to the body or further away from the body. Inhale, lengthen in the spine, open the heart forward, look up. Exhale, walk the hands slowly down and bringing the hands outwards on the fingertips, looking toward the right side now, toward the right shoulder, coming to this active twisted pigeon. One more deep breath here. And bring the hands back to center, resting the head on your arms. 10 deep breaths, pigeon pose on the right side. Again, you can shake your hips and add movement, or you can just stay in your static pose, making sure you're still not having too much weight on the right leg and not even stretching the top of your left thigh. Super important that you're still twisting, feeling the whole top of your left leg on the ground if possible. Inhale, start to rise up. Exhale, we're gonna lean towards our right leg now and swing that left leg around. Coming into a seated twist. The left leg will be on the ground. I see you guys. Left leg on the ground, we just turned it around from our pigeon. And our right leg will be in the same pose pretty much. 
Inhale the hands up. Exhale, right elbow comes to the outside of your right knee and enter this nice deep seated twist. You can keep the hand up flexed and open or down, maybe grabbing your leg wherever it reaches. You look behind you as much as possible. Trying to get your shoulders to maybe line up with each other. You can look at your shoulders for a moment and see if they're still in like a normal shoulder position facing forward or if you've twisted so much that it almost looks like you're turning towards the left now with your body and your shoulders are in line. Inhale. Back to center, gonna do something cool now, so get ready. <laughs> Turning towards the right, place your hands on the ground. Press into your feet and lift your hips up, walking the hands all the way around the back and sitting back down into your seated twist position, but on the other side. It's like magic. Don't know how it happened, don't ask me. <laughs> Inhale the hands up, exhale left elbow to the outside of your right knee. You can stay up, flex strong fingers or down grabbing the leg beneath. Right hand comes to the back and make sure it's still close, to, close enough to the body that you can use it to help you find length in your spine. If it's too far out, you're going to lean more towards the hand and kind of come out of this deep twist. So keep the head close enough that you can still keep this nice straight spine, open heart, and look behind you. Again, you can check your shoulders if you want or not. Slowly come back to center. Inhale the hands up, exhale, release the hands, and let's lay down on our backs. Coming to the last sequence of our deep stretching class. Feet are placed on the ground, hips width, facing forward, parallel to each other, kind of preparing us for bridge pose, except we're not going to go into bridge pose, we're just going to do pelvic tilts. What's a pelvic tilt? If you press into your feet, your pelvis will automatically lean back and do a posterior tilt and do the pelvic tilt on its own. It's not a matter of you, I mean, you can do it on your own as well, but if you just press into your feet, it should happen on its own. We're just going to do like 10 of those, connecting them to your breath. Inhale as you press into your feet and feel your pelvis just tilt back. Exhale, release back towards the ground, releasing your push into your feet. Inhale, push. Feel the pelvis just tilt back. Exhale, release. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, exhale. Just from doing these pelvic tilts, you should immediately feel instant relief from your back region, from your lower back. So if you often get lower back pain, just take this pose with you forever. This movement of the pelvic tilt. more deep breaths. And coming back to center, let's windshield wipe the legs. The feet stay in the same spot, just the knees dropping right and left. The hands can be wherever they want as well, on the belly, by your sides. Mm. 
coming back to center. We'll come into our last couple of poses. Let's come into an inversion together because why not? It's also a really nice deep stretch for the whole body. Coming into shoulder stand, the legs come up. Inhale, as you lift the legs and place the hands on your lower back, make sure your neck is straight in the center. Don't move your head right or left. There's a lot of weight on your neck now, so let's keep it safe. Take one deep breath here, and then slowly drop the feet behind you. Coming into plow pose, alasana in Sanskrit. A really great back stretcher. Hands can drop down towards the ground. Let's take three deep breaths here. Inhale, the legs come up. Exhale, slowly come down vertebrae by vertebrae. Giving the back an extra massage and activating the core as well. Dropping the feet down back towards the ground. Let's come into fish pose to stretch out the chest region and the neck. You can do this with bent legs or straight legs. It's up to you. Inhale, open the chest forward. You can lean on your elbows to help you get there and then scoop the hips back as far as possible until your crown of the head touches the ground. Let's take five deep breaths here. Feeling this deep heart opener, chest opener. You can keep the hands under your seat or bring them on top of your thighs. It's up to you. I love giving you guys variations and options because I know every body is different. I just want to make sure that you're all getting a little taste of all the variations and you can choose to do whatever you want in your own practice at home. And slowly release back to the ground. And let's just hug our legs before we come into Shavasana, bringing the knees to center, hugging them, grabbing opposite elbows, bringing the head to your legs. Supta Fawan Muktasana, wind release pose. Complete flexion of the body, everything just stretching inwards. <sighs> One more deep breath here. And slowly release your head back down towards the ground. Release your arms by your shoulders and let's come into just a twist for a moment or climb twist. Dropping the knees to the right side, look towards the left. Trying to keep your shoulders both on the ground. Inhale back to center. Exhale, other side. Legs to the left, look towards the right. Inhale back to center. And let's finally meet in Shavasana. I'm so proud of you guys for participating in this deep stretch class. Let's finish it off with the joints of Shavasana to just help our bodies heal, feel grounded, feel humble. Try not to think about anything else except for your breath or maybe the sounds around you. Helping yourself enter this meditative state of awareness. <clears throat> Only thing moving here is your belly rising and falling with every breath. The rest of your body should be completely relaxed. Even all the little muscles in your face, the space in between your eyebrows, your mouth. 
being aware if anything starts to tense up find it and release it feel free to stay in your shavasana for as long as possible after the practice i highly recommend it or you can slowly meet me in a seated pose, using your hands to help you. Without looking, just feeling, finding that seated pose that's comfortable for you. Maybe the one you started your practice in today or a different one. Find your normal breathing pattern. Feel the circulation flow throughout your body. And bring your hands to heart center. Thank you for practicing with me today. Namaste. Hope you have a beautiful day ahead of you. Thank you. Bye.